So we're in Leger this weekend, Port de Soleil, and it's time for the men's cross country Olympic race here this afternoon. The big one, the last, the closing race of this world championship. Nino Scherter going, the defending world champion. Thomas Pidcock's in this race, the Olympic champion. We're going down to the start line already. Filippo Colombo, one of the big dark horses today, Bart. Yeah, he's one of them. He was very strong in uh, Montsenen some weeks ago. He won that short track over there, second in cross country. Henry Cavancini from Brazil, Petropolis in South America, 33 years old. Not his strongest cross country Olympic season. No, it was very surprisingly strong last Friday in short track. There you go. What can he do today and, and, and then? He had a bad crash. Okay, we don't know what his condition is today. We'll find out shortly. Alan Hatherley, formerly an under-23 world champion. Took that in 2018 in Lenza Haider. The tallest man in the competition, David Valero from Spain. The winner of the cross-country Olympic race in snowshoe in the USA this year, his first World Cup win. And a man who does peak for the big days, bronze in Tokyo last year. He might be in for a surprise yes, today. Yes, another one that could get there, could take the gold, make no mistake. As can this man, Luca Brido, the winner of two World Cup races this season. Good fortune did come his way, but he was there at the end of those races to capitalise on them. Vlad Daskulu, another under 23 former world champion. A man knocking on the door of that first World Cup win this year. A mechanical actually stopping him in Andorra. Daskulu could push for gold this afternoon. The man they might all have to stop though, 36 years old. Looking at his 10th world championship title today. Can you believe if he takes the win? The number one plate of Nino Scherter. Tituan Caron, the Frenchman on form, the winner in Montanan at the last World Cup race, where he rode away easily to take the win. Less technical, this track here to determine. The, young, his the youngest winner ever in Alp d'Huez. Incredible, the man who can turn his hand to anything. Blevins is in there. Victor Koretsky, another big name for France as we look at the start list for this afternoon's World Championship. Last Forster for Switzerland. There's Pidcock, a bit further down the order. Cameron Orr, also from the UK. The fifth Pid start Pidcock, row. Yeah. OK, yes. That's so a long yeah, way back. Long way. Sam Gaze a little bit further back as well. The uh, newly crowned short track world champion from Friday. They're going to have to come through pretty quick. Yep. But it's not easy for them. No. Also, on a climb like this, this, there's a little bit of space, but all these runners are so fast. Yeah, that's right. So no, they, will, uh, they will sprint from the start till the top. And no one will give an inch at the World Championships, nope. that's nope. for sure. So many different nations here this afternoon. Great to see 99 riders, 35 nations represented. And we're about to go racing here at the World Championships then in the Jada Men's Cross Country. is underway, the number one player, Nino Scherz, is slipping a pedal there off the gate. Yes, Tito Akarot, Avancini, strong start, both flying up this first climb. There was Pitcock in the middle of that field, around yeah, 30, 40 position. And as you said, Bart, the pace so high, it's hard for anyone to come forward at the moment. Two climbs dominate this course. This is the first of them. The first. But it's Henry Cavancini leading at the moment. Vlad Daskulu on the number three bike right with him. Victor Koretsky going through. And we know from uh, Henry Cavancini that he is a fast starter all race. Yeah. Martins Blooms from Latvia are here, around 20th position. I haven't seen Thomas Pitcock, but definitely he has been... Uh, he, here he is, here he is, he actually, there he is. He is a lot to defend the world also, champion. Sorry, but Blav is also a good start. <laughs> Luca Brido, 11th, Hathaly in 12th. Litcher, 14th at the moment. Koretsky back in 15th place. Antoine Philippe, another Frenchman, just ahead of Sam Gaze inside the top 20 already. Sam Gaze, 19. Swatch Bauer, 24. So some big names further back. Cooper, 28th at the moment. But the riders, they are fighting for every position. Yep. 
every first line there. Pitcock, 36. Yeah, there's some work to do for him. 24 seconds will, back. He will have some more bottlenecks where we, where we will be hold on uh, on some of the sections. Levins. Valero here. It's Nino leading. Good to see Blevins start. Last lap then. The race to the rainbow stripes is on one to go here in the Jay France. Valero leads him out. Scherter right there with him. Brother comes across the line in the bronze medal position. Just seven seconds in arrears. No Thomas Pitcock in sight yet. Surely the gap too big now. And Scherter now to the front on this climb. Or oh, isn't that an attack of Nino? Big gear for Valero, stood up behind him. Here comes Pitcock. Pitcock chasing hard. He's across the line. Scherter cooling himself down. Similar, 32 for Pitcock. Out of the saddle again for Nino, pushing hard here. And, and also Pitcock does. And Pitcock sprinting. So aggressive. Look at the speed of him on here now. So aggressive. And Hamida, Jose Hamida, the former world champion, telling me before the race, he works with him. He can sprint this climb. A minute and a half is the perfect effort for him. Yeah, but they, these but guys these do two are as well. <laughs> they do the same. The number one plate leading. 32 seconds is too much. The nine-time world champion, Scherter. Can he make it 10 here this afternoon? Valero trying to stay with him and managing it. He does it. He, st he still does it. Incredible race, Masir. Wow. The final lap. Natalie on seventh place. Guerini on fifth place. Impressive ride for Marcel Guerini. Pitcock coming in the sight. There he is, the Olympic champion. Wow. We know how well he can climb. He did it in Alpe d'Huez in the Tour de France a few weeks ago. He gained 10 seconds back from the finish line. From <laughs> to, the, to, to the first split. Keep an eye on this. Only one more really big climb though, Bart. That one again, the second climb is parallel with that first. Yeah. But, but, uh, but will I, it be enough for him? But I think only only uh, a bronze place in that descent, in that technical descent. Can he make the difference on that descent? He's gonna he's gonna, he's gonna try. Really yeah. try. He's pushing the pressure on Valero. Risky to push hard on these descents though, Bart, when they're as tired as they are now. 13 seconds for Brido. Nino looking like he's just struggling to shake him on these descents as well. And I would have said Nino was the faster on the downhills out of these two. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. He... Valero keeping him honest. Especially on these tight turns, which will following uh, quite quickly after that bridge. A few big jumps and then that forward section, that next forward section. That's some very tight turns. Not long to go now, not long to find out who will be crowned this year's world champion. Yeah, Nino and Valero are in front. Here, here they, they are. are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they are. They are already right uh, Valero right there on this descent mark. Yeah, close. That climb, yeah, wow. Yeah. Sprinting away. But I don't think he's going to manage it now to get back on level and turn. Again. Another mistake on the same turn. And losing some serious time there. And looking pretty frustrated with that. Yeah, he does. He, look, he really does. Looking frustrating, what you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's going on? Well, change the rear wheel. I think with a soft rear tyre. And a small gap now. Yes, on that descent, sure has done a little bit of damage. And this next climb might be talent because I would say the Valero has to be level with him at the top of it. Yeah, but Valero is so strong on yeah. these climbs. He is. No, no ball. Ball. It's all out to the finish line. Valero, though, closing that gap. Valero does. Quite easily, one-handed. Taking yeah. drinks on as well. Valero, Share square water. Valero, Valero is still looking good. He is, yeah. But when it comes down to a sprint, that, that's, I think it's sure. so difficult to beat, so hard to beat. I think Valero's got some incredibly strong horsepower in those big legs of his, though. Yeah, but you need to be in a good position. Yeah, that's right. And that's these tactics Nino has. Yeah. The experience. He has been in, 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 in this situation many times. Yes, Valero, he has. Valero never. <laughs>
Probably not, not a, on a, in a race like this. World Last Champs. year's World Championship came down to a sprint finish. Yeah. yeah. Nino came out on top. S same. Uh, yeah, kind of. Similar. <laughs> similar scenario. Yeah. The number eight seconds. He's still in touch with the leaders. Yes, he is. Yeah, he is. And he will give everything he has. This massive crowd have been treated to a battle royal this afternoon. Valero up on the high line. Is it an attack? It is. Yeah, but Nino. A little bit more up here. Yeah, gets steeper now. Oh, so steep, actually, this last part of the climb. <laughs> this is a very steep. It's incredibly section. steep, yeah. A few options over here, some different lines. Well, there it goes on in. the inside now. Shadow responds again, I think. Shadow holds on. Valero's pushing. Valero's got the power in his legs now, you know yeah, that. But he's, he, he can't overtake him. And he, on some of the sections, it's better to stay a bit more calm and stay behind him instead of trying and try to, new, to, to take some new lines, which are almost impossible to ride. Then you will even lose more time, yeah. or, or you will make mistakes. If you're looking at your first gold medal, yeah. it must be hard to control the emotions. It's true. <laughs> so these are the moments That's what that I count. Said. These are the moments that count, right? Nino, uh, Nino has the experience. He's hard to beat when it comes down to a situation like this. Calmly riding around the very inside there, takes the high difficulty. He will push hard into that descent to open the gap a little bit. Only just. Just a little bit of a gap might be enough already. Any breathing room he has. And it will be, Even a couple of bike legs he will, will do. He will recover in that descent, yeah. and then from there on, you, will, you see. And he's got a few bike legs. Yeah, that, that's the tactic. Look at that, Valero's not going to let Valero back into this one if he can help it. Nino is so fast here. Oh, he is unbelievable. Look at the gap he's open. Listen to the crowds. Enjoying what they're seeing. Weather the storm from the Olympic champion, from Thomas Pitcock, Valero too. And Nino showing us why he's already a nine-time world champion. He is unbelievable, Bar. You see the small gap he already has here. 36 years old and as motivated as he was at the start of his career. There's no stopping Shatter. Just a few slippery corners for him. That's the first one. Oh. Can't believe what I'm seeing here today. Shatter still sprinting. All out now to the finish line. He's nearly there, Bob. Yeah, he's nearly there. Incredible. But these tactics he always has. He's almost there. He is almost there. He's going to see Valero behind him as he comes back now around this hairpin. Oh, I know. Still so close, these top yeah, three. Yeah, he's so close here, Nino. An hour and 20 minutes. These last rock sections now, the last test for Nino. And another sprint for him to the top. And a chance at breaking Absalom's record next week in Val de Sole at the World Cup race there. Of all time World Cup wins, the legs are there for Nino. Last rock section. Oh, nervous times. I'm nervous watching, Bar. <laughs> but he did it on the descent again, Nino. Yeah. And he put the hammer down, and it doesn't matter if it's a climb or it's a descent. There's no rider like this man in mountain biking. The greatest there has ever been gets even better. Nino Scherner takes it to 10 in the Jane Brown, the world champion for 2022. His 10th elite world title, can you believe? Scherner has done it again. The man with the golden globe, Valero, silver medal for Spain. An unbelievable ride, but Nino was stronger in the end. Ten times. Ten times a world champion. It's hard to believe. And what a ride for Luca Brino taking the bronze medal. Wow, what a race we saw here in Leger, France today. An unbelievable performance yet again from Nino Scherter. Ten times. Ten times, yeah. That is ridiculous. <laughs> Surely we'll never see anyone match that. Come on, Nino. Enjoy this one. And here's Thomas Pitcock. Couldn't do it today, but not his best day. He had to fight hard in the first few laps. 
spent so much energy yeah. to come to the front. Yeah. Flat tire. Yeah, it's a difficult race for Thomas. He got there, he got to the front. But this one belongs to Nino Scherter. The greatest male cross-country racer there has ever been. No argument with that now, Bar. No, no argument, no. It's only respect. That's right. His great adversary, Julian Absalom, winning here in 2004. The last time the world champs were in Leger, Pitcock comes across the line in fourth. But what a performance of Lars yeah. Guerini from Switzerland. The second Swiss rider across the line of nine. There's some tired looking riders coming in. Jordan Theroux, the first French rider. his best performance this year, Jordan Saru. Yeah. Alan Hatterley. Not a great ride, over two minutes back in the end. Inside the top ten, though. <laughs> his shatter. He is unbelievable. A massive crash. It's snowshoe a few weeks ago, not that long ago, no, to recover, no. and it was it was a huge crash, yeah. horrible looking accident. And there's no there's no peaking for Nino Scherter. No, no, constantly He's strong. Eight. Yeah, oh, every that, year. That is almost the most. Every will kill thing. again. That's almost the most impressive thing about him. Victor Koretsky on eight, Filippo and Colombo week. and Andre Sink. Martins Blums from Latvia. Strong ride. Yeah. Incredible. 11 place, place from Martins Blums. Just behind Andre Sig there. From our team. Good mark. Yeah, yeah. Represented. He finished fifth in the short track last Friday. Now 11 place. Good. Good, had a good weekend, huh? Yeah, good weekend. He had a Freud on 12th place to him. Schlemm comes in in 13th. Zanotti 14th. Albin. A little bit further back today, 15th for him. Uh, Daskalu. Yeah. 16th. But what a race for Nina Schurter. <laughs> I mean, not only a race, but to win a World Champs title again. It's. Oh. Of course, we thought Pitcock, Nino. Yeah, that's right. But to do it. He did it again. To actually, yeah, to do it, to take 10, to take his 10. Actually, we only recognize him as, as the man with the rainbow jersey, so that's easier for us. <laughs> that's very true. 36 years old, but... <laughs> Still winning little champs titles. Yeah. Nine gold, two silvers. Thomas Griot, seven gold. Excuse me, everyone. No, but go on. Dan Daniele Brado, the brother of Luca. Yeah. Daniele Brado is content to know that his brother is medaillé today. Now, also, so so many different nationalities, huh? Yeah. World Championships, big festival of cycling. Great to see, you know, some riders from countries that wouldn't normally line up with Nino Scherer on the line. Yeah, with Chua. Yeah, Mexico. Mexico. 21st Mexico. place for him. <laughs> Sherman's off the bike as soon as he's across the line. Yeah. 23rd for him. It looked like some drive yeah. train problems. Yeah. Dan Connell, 25th, there he comes. Well, what a world championships it's been, huh? What? Today and yesterday, blown my mind. My <laughs> <laughs> life. It's true, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. But it was Nino Scherter, who did golden, it. golden Nino Scherter, who ten. took his 10th elite world championship title today. Yeah, 10 times world champion. 
to get one is amazing. Yeah, it's something special already. But to get ten. To do it, to do it ten times. Oh, incredible. It's unbelievable, yeah, isn't it? Incredible, yeah. It's extraordinary, isn't it? It's extraordinary, it's true, yeah. It's ridiculous. And also, like you said, that crash in the uh, snowshoe and then, yeah, recovering so quick from that. And let's go down and hear from the newly crowned world champion. <laughs> Okay, results are up first. Nine seconds it was between the gold and the silver medal. It was close on that last lap, but Scherter doing the damage on that descent. Rado comes in just 29 seconds off Nino to take bronzes early to take his first world championship medal. Thomas Pitcock, a big effort from him to cut him through from the fifth row. But I mean, Nino must have been flying. It has been like a, a, a 23 seconds uh, at the finish line and then one lap time. It, yeah, more than a minute. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely <laughs> flying on that last lap. Right, Bloom from Latvia there, as Bart said, 11th place for him. Daskulu, three and a half back. He'll be looking to improve on that as we go to Val de Sole for the World Cup finals next week. Uchoa from Mexico, 21. We know that he's strong in short track. Antoine Billy, 26, just ahead of fellow Frenchman Maxime Marat. With this man from Switzerland, Nino Schurter. He did it for the 10th time, world champion. Cross country Olympic. The rainbow jersey belongs to him again for another year. Even after that crash early in the race, he managed it to get back on his bike very quickly. And when he came down to the last few laps, he knows what to do. Crossing the finish line in the first place. Congrats, Nino. Big respect to do it like this. It's just Luda. I'm just looking at the stats yeah. here of his wins. You know, You're, you are the greatest cross-country male Olympic athlete of all time. Um, and today you've taken a step further with 10, 10 UCI world titles. How does this feel? <laughs> it's insane. It's, it's unbelievable. I couldn't believe when I crossed the finish that I, that I did again. Uh, yeah, it was a tough race. I, I really tried to take it over from the start, making a hard race. The pickup can't uh, get too easy to the front. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a tough race. In the end, we were like, Avaleo and I, and uh, yeah, I took my chance to, yeah, to, to try to, to force him to make mistakes. And uh, yeah, luckily he did a mistake in one of the last technical bits and uh, I could get away. And from there, I just, I went full gas and, uh, but I, I, yeah, I still can't believe it. <laughs> Back in 2004, you obviously won the junior title here. Now, 18 years later, you've won the elite. Uh, that's quite an achievement, hey? Yeah, it's crazy. This place is uh, it's magic for me. Uh, yeah, I, I won my first title here, and uh, now I won again as oldest rider <laughs> ever, my 10th uh, title. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. Congratulations, enjoy it. OK, we'll be back to look at this amazing race in a few moments' time. We'll be back with a Mercedes-Benz post show after this. Have you ever stared at a picture and it came alive? They say every rider has a calling. 15 athletes on their mind trip through Europe. A fantastic ride into the wildest dreams of world champion. Maybe it, it's 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 the end of the whole of the whole weekend. I mean, this, what a finale! This, this, yeah, what a finale! Yeah. This, this ten title yesterday downhill with Louis Bruni here in front, yeah. and Nino take his, his tenth world <laughs> champs title. Yeah, maybe it's it's it, that's the story. It's been, I think, the most memorable World Championships ever. I mean, the crowd, yeah. everything yeah. has been but absolutely. But the uh, also on that moment, also it was only Valero, and for Nino as well. If there's only one rider with him, then it's easily to, for him to manage as well. Yeah, that's what he him. said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what he did. He put the pressure on him in that descent, and he was so much faster. He just had a few seconds when they came out of that four cross section. Yeah. And then the gap was there. And we heard him in his post-race interview saying, actually, that he had, he tried to force Valero in a mistake, and he managed it yeah. on that last yeah. downer. Because yeah. when they came in, they shot at the... He's, he's happy to, to the race. 
and the people is uh, less gas in the crema incredible. How hard was it today to go up against big goat Nino Shorter? Nino is a complication uh, to the race is the uh, my veteran is uh, <laughs> try, try in Spanish. It's fine. <laughs> eh, Nino, la verdad que muy fuerte, sabe leer muy bien las carreras y en carreras como citas importantes mundiales o olimpiadas, la verdad que, que es muy complicado de, de batir. But Nino is a very strong rider and in important races such as the Olympics and World Championships, it's very hard to beat him. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Congratulations indeed to David Valero, an amazing performance from him. I mean, silver's good, but uh, I guess the gold would have been a yeah, lot better yeah, for him. Yeah, of course. You, you felt a little bit that he, yeah, he yeah. liked to have a little bit more, but also the, the respect of him to Nino. Yeah, that's, yeah, right. that's, that's how it was. Yeah. You've you got to respect 10 World yeah, Championship yeah. titles. I think that there was, yeah. I don't have that. I didn't have the, the legs and uh, I stayed in, in full position. Also, the track looked so hard today. It was dusty. People had to get off of the bikes pushing. There were crashes. How hard did it feel to be riding this track out there today? I don't, uh, I don't so when a bit of a crash, honestly. But uh, today, see, the track was uh, really, really hard. Uh, the green was uh, so long. Uh, but uh, the atmosphere was crazy. All the friends, uh, all the first people, uh, uh, did a great job and yeah, it was, uh, was, was super amazing to race there. Congratulations, Luca. Congratulations indeed. Certainly wanted a bit more. I mean, he's got a taste for winning, hasn't he, Luca Brider? The self-belief is there as it should be. He is one of the very best on the planet. Yeah, he is. Uh, and he already showed that many times uh, this year. And of course, he was there, and, but he felt as well when Nino attacked on that climb. He felt the legs were winning there. Yeah. And maybe the bronze medal was yeah, just uh, the best what he could take out of it. And uh, You've got to be happy with that.